Well, the jury has found Michigan mother Jennifer Crumbly guilty of involuntary manslaughter after her son killed four classmates in a school shooting. Jury members deliberated for 11 hours before delivering the unprecedented verdict yesterday. Prosecutors argued Crumley ignored warning signs and let her troubled son have access to a gun. CBS News' Michael George has more on what happened in the courtroom. We find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Jennifer Crumley closed her eyes and shook her head as the jury found her guilty of all four counts. The first time in U.S. history a parent has been found criminally responsible for a mass shooting committed by their child. It was back in November of 2021 when Crumbly's then 15-year-old son, Ethan, shot and killed four students at Oxford High School. Madison Baldwin, Tate Meir, Justin Schilling, and Hannah St. Juliana. Parents of the victims say justice was served. Prosecutors say Jennifer Crumbly ignored several warning signs, even refusing to take her son home the day of the shooting after school officials warned about disturbing drawings he made. Her son even wrote that his parents ignored his pleas for help. The jury foreperson says access to the gun was a key factor in the guilty verdict. The thing that really hammered it home is that she was the last adult with the gun. The defense argued Crumbly had no warning signs her son was violent. Did you ever believe that your son needed mental health treatment? No. Legal analyst Joe Tamburino says this case sets a significant precedent. The next time there's some type of school shooting or a juvenile who commits a very serious felony, they're going to look to the parents. They could arrest the parents. Crumbly could face a maximum of 60 years behind bars, 15 years per manslaughter count. Michael George, CBS News. So joining me now with more on this is Barbara O'Brien. She's a professor at the Michigan State University College of Law. Thank you so much for joining us. So the jury really had a lot of different things to think about, but the jury for women spoke to reporters and she said the fact that Jennifer Crumley was the last adult to possess the gun really was a key factor for them. She had taken her son out shooting and, uh, and was the last one with him when he had the gun. Why do you think that was so significant? Well, I, I mean, I think everyone can understand that when you have a teenager, you don't always know what they're doing, what they're up to. Um, I mean, I think every parent of a teenager has experienced that at some point. And the fact that she, I mean, not only did they buy their 15-year-old a gun, uh, but that she was kind of lax in how it was protected or stored. Um, I understand that she says that this was her husband's responsibility. Um, but that's a really compelling fact that I think would be really hard for a jury to overlook. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, people were riveted uh, when it came to this case, and her husband is going to be facing similar charges as well. But I want to talk about whether or not this is a precedent-setting case. Um, I was thinking about the last time we heard about a, a school shooting that really caught our attention. It was the six-year-old in Virginia. The mother of that six-year-old who brought a gun and, and shot his teacher, she was charged, but it was gun-related charges. It had to do with um, marijuana use and possessing a gun. We don't ever really see parents being charged in this way. Do you think that this, this is going to change with the results of this trial? Well, I think that the facts of this case are probably pretty extreme mm. in, the, in the level of notice that the parents had as to the troubles he was having, the fact that they had the meeting that morning about the disturbing pictures he drew, and she didn't mention that he owned a gun that looked just like what was in the picture. Mm -hmm. um, but I do worry that this is the kind of thing that will embolden prosecutors to start going after parents um, in maybe less clear circumstances. Mm. Um, and it, it's a really big, there's a really big difference between charging someone based on their conduct of not, you know, not locking up their gun or, or being neglectful and letting their child have access to it. It's a, it's a really different story when you're saying you are personally liable for the deaths of of these victims, um, even though you didn't you know you didn't know it was going to happen, you had no intent to do so. Um, I think what I worry about is that this could then 
lead to more prosecutions like that, which puts mm. in my example, then the jury will say no, but they put a lot of pressure on defendants to plead guilty. Right. That actually makes an awful lot of sense if you're possibly facing manslaughter charges. And I don't know what the sentencing looks like, but it's going to be on April 9th. Um, what happens next in this case? What sort of time is Jennifer Crumley facing now? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, she's I, I, the, she's punishable by up to 15 years in prison. I'd be surprised if she got that much. Um, I don't think she has a serious criminal record. I do believe she has some arrests in her past, but um, I, 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 I don't see this case getting the maximum, but I, I, I don't know. Judges have a tremendous amount of discretion in how they sentence. Um, and so we'll know more about what the judge thinks when the judge can speak freely about the facts of the case. Right. And, and part of the, the issue is that her husband is also facing, I think, the, probably the same charges. And I assume that that's part of the reason why both the prosecution and the defense lawyers were unable to speak. There's a gag order uh, in the case. Mm -hmm. Barbara O'Brien, thank you very much. Thank you so much.